what do Euclid, 12-year-old Albert Einstein, and the American President James Carfield have in common? Any guesses? They all came out with elegant proofs to prove Pythagoras' theorem. One of the fundamental rules for geometry and also the basis for constructing stable buildings and triangulating GPS coordinates. Hello everyone, my name is Misha Nambiar and I welcome you all to aptitude360.online. Today in this video, you will learn how to prove Pythagoras theorem using similarity method. You might be surprised to know that there are more than 350 plus proofs to prove Pythagoras theorem. However, we are going to use triangular similarity method today because a majority of my students fear similarity and I want to break that myth. B it integrates a lot of other topics like linear equations, algebra, lines and angles, constructions and triangles. So friends, let us get started and learn how to prove Pythagoras theorem using triangle similarity method. In order to prove Pythagoras theorem, the first thing we need is a right angle triangle. Now you might ask me, Misha, why do we need a right angle triangle to prove Pythagoras theorem? It is because Pythagoras theorem applies only to right angle triangles. Pythagoras theorem does not hold true to any other triangle other than right angle triangle. Now, what is a right angle triangle? A right angle triangle is nothing but a triangle which has a 90 degree angle in it. Any triangle which has a 90 degree angle in it is called a right angle triangle. Now, as you can see, this triangle has three sides to it. Now, all these three sides have particular names. For example, the slant height or the longest height or the side opposite to this 90 degree angle is known as your hypotenuse. Yes, you heard me right. This is known as your hypotenuse. Let me check the color of the pen. Yes. It's a very fancy word for a fairly simple idea which means the longest side of the right angle triangle or the side opposite to the 90 degree angle. Now the side standing and making a 90 degree angle with the another side is known as your perpendicular. Yes. The standing side which is making 90 degree angle with your another side is known as your perpendicular. And the side on which this perpendicular is standing is known as your base. Now Pythagoras theorem is nothing but establishing a relationship between these three sides that is hypotenuse, perpendicular and base. If you are able to establish a relationship between these three sides then you have achieved your goal to prove Pythagoras theorem. Now, which method are we using today to prove Pythagoras theorem? We are using similarity. But to use similarity, we need more than one triangle so that we can compare and prove them similar. However, as of now, we have only one triangle here. So let us see how we can create more triangles using this one main triangle. So what I will do is I will copy this triangle so that we can keep the originality of the triangle as it is and we can make the modifications in the copied triangle. Now if I rotate this triangle and do it like this. So for example if this triangle was my A, B, C my C, A would come down and my B will come, go up. Right? So I have what I have done I have just rotated this triangle like this and made the triangle look like this. Now using our constructions knowledge where we learned how to draw a perpendicular line from a point outside the line, we can draw a line segment from angle B to the side CA such that it makes a 90 degree angle with the side CA, right? So using your construction knowledge, you can draw a line segment from angle B 
to the side CA such that it makes a 90 degree angle. Now, in lines and angles, you have learnt that the sum of angles falling on the same line are, is equal to 180 degree. That is straight line angles, right? So, if one angle is 90 degree, then what will be the other angle falling on the same straight line? It will also be 90 degree, so that the sum comes out to be 180 degree, right? So, I can say that this angle is also 90 degree. Now, can we see two more similar triangles to this original triangle? So, having done that, we have got three triangles which are right angle triangles. That is, triangles having 90 degrees in it. So, let me label this as D. So that I can call this triangle as triangle C, D, B, triangle A, D, B and this original triangle as triangle A, B, C. Now please make a note here that we do not know anything about the sides of these three triangles, right? However, we know something about the angles of this triangle. For example, we know that this angle is 90 degree. We know this angle is 90 degree. We know this angle is 90 degree. So, all these three triangles have 90 degree angles in it, right? That is why they are also known as right angle triangles. What else do we know apart from that? We know that this is A angle A is also here. So, can I mark it as here? So, this we have two angle A's. That means angle A, triangle ADB and triangle ABC have angle A common A's. Angle A's, right? And then I also know that this angle C is same as this angle C. Okay? So, using the angle sum property of the triangle, we know that the sum of angles of in a triangle is 180 degree. So, if two angles of this triangle are equal to the two angles of this triangle, obviously the third angle will also be the same. So, can I say that this third side will be equal to this angle A and here this third angle will be equal to this angle C. So, we can see three similar triangles here. Now, we need to know the three criteria that exist to prove triangles similar. Let me show you that. The first criteria is angle angle. If you are able to prove that two angles of one triangle are equal to the two angles of another triangle, then you can prove that those two triangles are similar in nature. Right? I will not go into these two criteria because they are talking about sides in them and we do not have any knowledge about the sides of in this case particularly. So, I will stick to this case and I will not explore similarity on the basis of these two criteria. So, let us explore angle angle criteria and see if we can establish similarity between the three triangles we have made. So, which three triangles do we have? We have triangle CDB, we have triangle ADB and we have triangle ABC. Now, since we want to develop a proof Pythagoras theorem in this triangle, I will keep this triangle as constant and I will try to prove triangle ABC similar to tri both of these triangles. Why are we doing that? You will realize in some time. Okay? But as of now, our goal is to prove triangle ABC similar to triangle CDB and ADB. Okay. First, let me take triangle CDB and triangle uh, ABC. After this, I will also explore the similarity between ADB and triangle ABC. Okay. Now, in CDB and ABC, let me see what all do we have in common. We have angle C in common, right? 
So this angle C is equal to angle C which is common. Then I have angle D which is 90 degree and here I have angle B which is also 90 degree. So I can say angle D is equal to angle B because both of them are 90 degree. Now if these two angles are same obviously I told you th that the third angle would also be same because the angle sum property of a triangle says the sum of angles of a triangle are 180 degree. So the third angle is which is left is angle B is equal to angle A. So if I have to write in the same order so what will I write triangle C D B the sign of similar is this similar to triangle C B A hence proved. So I have already established similarity between two triangles. Now let me move to the other two set of triangles. In triangle A D B which is common angle A as we can see here single arc line. So angle A is equal to angle A of A B C it is common. Angle D here is equal to your angle B which is your 90 degree again. This angle D here is equal to your angle B which is what is left. Your angle B is equal to angle C. Therefore, your triangle A D B is I told you the sign for similar is this is similar to triangle A B C. Good to go. So I have already proved this triangle is similar. Now what now if I know that these two triangles are similar there is one thing that we need to know and what is that? If two triangles are similar then the measures of the corresponding sides of those two triangles are proportional or in same ratio. Right? I mean to say that if two triangles are similar then the ratio of the corresponding sides of those triangles will be equal. For example, the um, hypotenuse of this triangle upon the hypotenuse of this triangle will be equal to the uh, ratio of the side of other two sides of the perpendicular of this triangle and the perpendicular of the other triangle. So why am I doing that? I want to establish a relationship between the sides of the triangle using the similarity method. Right? So, I know that using similarity, I can reach to the sides of this triangle. So, that is why I wanted to prove the triangle similar first, so that I can establish a relationship between the sides of the triangle ABC. Now, we have already established relationship between CDB is similar to triangle CBA and we have also established a relationship between okay cba is nothing but triangle abc since i want to write in the correct order i have just jump, jumbled the words now in triangle cdb which is your hypotenuse or the side opposite to the 90 degree it is your bc so, may I change the pen? Okay. So, hypotenuse is your BC. In ABC, which is your hypotenuse, it's nothing but AC. Okay. In triangle C, uh, B, CDB, what is your angle opposite to this one arc? It is your CD. And opposite to one arc, it is your, we have to take the corresponding sides only. So we have to be very careful when we are taking the sides. So they should be same. So one arc opposite side, one arc opposite side is BC. Now, using our linear equations knowledge, 
we know we can cross multiply these two and make it linear equation. So, can I write it as BC into BC is equal to CD into AC. This will become your BC square is equal to CD into AC. So, I have got my first equation. Now, in this relationship, let me see what is the hypotenuse in triangle ADB or the side opposite to the 90 degree angle? It is your AB upon what is the hypotenuse here? It is again your AC. What is the side opposite to your double line arc? It's your AD. Double arc opposite AB. Okay. Now again linear equations AB into AB is equal to AD into AC. So I have got my second equation here which says hmm. now adding 1 and 2 equations. What did we get? AB square This was our equation which we got. Right? Now we have like terms here. So, we can take AC common here. Yes, this is nothing but algebra. AC common factorization, we have taken AC common and we can write the not common terms in the bracket. Now, what is CD plus AD? We'll just look at this figure. CD plus AD. What will you get? You will get AC. So, I can write, if I add both of them, what will I get? AB square plus BC square is equal to AC into AC. That is your AB square plus BC square is equal to AC square. Now, let me see if we, I have been able to establish a relationship between these three sides. What is my AC? AC is your hypotenuse. I am writing it in short forms. I am representing it by H. What is my BC? My BC is perpendicular. What is my AB? My AB is your base. Okay. So, I have established a relationship between these three sides which says the square of hypotenuse is equal to the square of the perpendicular plus the square of base. I hope you like this video and we have covered a lot of topics through this topic. We have covered in constructions, we have con uh, covered algebra, we have covered lines and uh, line, linear equations. Uh, if you have any doubts about any other topic, please leave it in the comment section so that I can make a video on that and uh, publish it. Thank you for watching this video. See you in the next video. Bye-bye and take care.